Okay. All right, let's share again. All righty, so let's start off a little bit of WordPress news and events. So since we have met last month, if you recall last month, our entire presentation, if you're interested, you can go back and watch that, was, um, was an overview of WordPress 6.2. Um, in fact, I think I'm trying to remember our, our the date of our meetup, but at that time, I believe 6.2 was supposed to be released the next day or something. So it, it got slightly delayed, I believe, just maybe a couple of days or so. Um, but if you've if you looked at your WordPress dashboard, your admin dashboard recently, you've probably seen either the, the upgrade or a message for it. So WordPress 6.2 came out March 29th. It was uh, named Dolphy after another jazz musician. I, I'm not familiar with Dolphy, but... Um, as I said, I, I won't go over all of the features of it. Feel free to go back and, and watch our last presentation. Um, we, we cover that quite extensively. Uh, and as far as WordCamp, the only one I've seen, um, at least in the U.S., <clears throat> is WordCamp Buffalo coming up right around the corner, May 6, 2023. As far as I know, I looked at their site kind of quickly. I believe this one is in person only. I could be wrong on that, but I, I didn't see any way to sign up for a virtual session. So. It's nice. Um, those of us who are WordPress organizers, and I know there's actually a couple on here as well, besides Peter and myself. Um, you know, the WordPress, um, WordPress.org are really encouraging people to try to get back together in person, you know, where possible, you know, safely. So that's that's even something Peter and myself have talked about. Of, again, not getting rid of these virtual meetups of our own, but at some point sprinkling in a couple of kind of coffee meetups if we can throughout the year. So be on the lookout for that. Maybe after the summer, we can, we can um, announce some of that. And then tool and plugin spotlight. And what, what do you got for us? Well, this I've got one. I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, uh, but I'm going to show you something. Um, let me know if you can see my screen. Yep. Okay. So the block visibility plugin. Um, by Nick Diego. It's been available um, for a while. There's 10,000 plus downloads of this plugin. It's a great plugin, but what's been made even greater is Nick's role. He was with WP Engine and now he's with Automatic. Automatic is the organization that is the strongest force behind um, WordPress, maybe is one of the best ways to uh, put it. The um, One of the co-founders, Matt Mullenweg, it's, it's his company. Um, and Nick now, Nick Diego now is employed by Automatic. A lot of the folks that you'll see out and kind of, you know, they're, they, they call them automaticians and they're, they're um, uh, you'll have developer advocates and a lot of folks who have some visibility who are kind of part of that automatic world. Well, Nick Diego is now part of that. So what he did is he took his pro block visibility um, plugin and he made it all free. So now, all the pro features of this. So you, so this was a the the an example of um, what might be called like a freemium plugin, where you get a free version that has up to a certain number of um, you know functions, capabilities, and all. And then he had a kind of a, a paid level. He's made it all free. So this particular plugin, if you ever need anything um, to to where you want to um, manage the visibility of plugins based on a whole lot of uh, um, factors um, and, you know, whether you can hide the block based on uh, screen size, user role, um, time. If you, if you're somebody who might, you know, want to say you could do good morning in the morning and good evening in the evening, um, you know, and there's so many uh, options that you can, um, that you can use with the block visibility tool. Um, if you look at it in the back end, I, I've just got this simple little thing where, uh, I've got the plugin loaded. Um, so if you look at, you know, this particular paragraph block over here on the right now, uh, you have new a new section with the with this visibility plugin um, loaded and enabled, where you can you can set all these options. Now right now it's just screen size. So I'm saying, okay, um, show only this on a desktop. Show only this. Um, well, actually, what I want to do is show this. Just the opposite. Um, oh no, hide on desktop. Uh, uh, don't hide it on tablet. Sh hide it on mobile and only show this. So you can see by toggling, but that's just screen size. So the options that you have are all of these options now, and again, all free, where you can you can 
get to a level of of uh, specificity. You know, maybe they come from a certain place, or you've got a cookie set if you're advanced at that level where you say, "Oh, they're 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 coming back to my site now." I want, hey, thanks for coming back. You could do all of this. Put a make make a block show or not show based on all of these criteria. The date and time. Say I turned that on, and now I came back to the main section. I'm going to see. Okay, now not only do I have the screen size option, but I turned on the schedule option, and I can say, well, show it only a certain time. Maybe you're running a sale, or it's, you know, uh, you've got holiday hours, maybe for a shop or something like that, and you, you know, you, you can set it up in advance and just automatically make it not visible. Uh, by setting a, a time. So this block visibility uh, plugin, it's in the repository. It's the fully loaded for free. Um, highly recommended if you have any need to kind of have some level of show, don't show uh, of a block. So I'm not sure if any of our folks here use it, but it's really, really powerful. And the fact that this pro is now completely free is just, you know, icing on the cake. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that is really powerful. I mean, I've seen obviously some of those visibility type settings like in, you know, Elementor or Divi, but not to that level. That's that's a lot of options. And yeah, for free, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's super. Awesome. All right, I will stop sharing. Yeah, we put, we put the link. So I uh, was asking for the link right. to it. We put the link to it in the, the chat. Sue, Sue beat me to it. Sue's always fast on the keyboard. So thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue. All right, so let's um, let's get to, to the meat of the night's topic. There's the uh, plugin, as Peter was just saying. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier too, so we'll send out this link afterwards. When we also post the, the recording. So this is our Hartford WP website, HartfordWP.com, and this is like I said, you can find all of our. We, we started building this, and um, not we. Peter built this. Give Peter all credit. We started using this <laughs> in February. So um, as I said, hopefully going forward, you'll find all of our presentations here. But anyway, so let's jump into tonight's presentation. So this is exploring the power of WordPress text blocks, part one. We'll, we'll explain a little bit about the the parts later. Um, let me make my screen a little bit bigger. Sorry, got the Zoom window. Never figure out a good way to hide the Zoom window. And I'm going to try your keyboard controls, Peter. So let's see. Oh, look at that. Page down. Excellent. Nice. Down key. <laughs> Wonderful. This is, this is version two of his slideshow presentation. So this is a patent pending. Um, so our agenda, real quick, we'll do some introductions of, of who I am, who Peter is. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, the background behind this, this series. What are, what are we hoping that um, you get out of it and kind of what, what prompted us to um, consider this for uh, an ongoing series? And then we're going to really dive deeply into a couple of, of the text blocks. So again, part one here, we're going to dive pretty deep into the, the paragraph block. Peter's going to cover that. Um, I'm going to cover the, the list block, and then Peter's going to do the heading block. Then we're going to do some wrap up and, and hopefully save time for questions on anything we covered tonight or anything that you have uh, interest in. So uh, real quick about myself, I'm Ray. I'm one of the co-organizers of the Hartford WordPress group. Um, I've been, I was in software development slash architecture for 25 plus years, worked for some large corporations, um, some based in Connecticut, some not based in Connecticut. Uh, I've been using WordPress for around seven plus years. Um, Self-employed as a just website developer working with like local businesses in, in my area. Uh, married, no kids. I live in Newington, Connecticut, which is not far from Hartford, and I am a geek. Peter, I'll scroll for you. Yep. Um, I'm the co-organizer of the Hartford uh, WordPress Meetup. Um, been working on the web uh, since pretty much the beginning. Um, so about 25 years working marketing communications, uh, doing design, sort of the jack of all trades, the tech guy, um, which gave me a lot of opportunities to to get on the web, work with Hartford Current, um, over 10 years uh, in WordPress, um, but not still not a coder so much, although I can dabble with code, certainly, but uh, a builder, a teacher, a maintainer, all of those things. Uh, I am self-employed um, under the Ingersoll Interactive banner. I'm married. I'm married. Uh, I have two adult kids. I live in South Windsor, Connecticut, which is to the just south east of the airport, um, of the Hartford airport. Um, and I like to call myself a WordPress admin and DIY advocate, uh, again, because I'm not a developer. And yet you put together this awesome slideshow thing. And yeah. 
you, you and your buddy Chat GPT. You and Chat GPT. Put us developers out of business. That's right. That's right. Um, and this is, a, I'm sorry, this is a very sparse slide, but I just, I needed a slide just to prompt, <laughs> prompt the conversation. Plus, plus your screen size. Now, next thing I have to do is adapt for screen size. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a lot more white space than I do. Right. <laughs> so, and, and Peter, feel free to jump in. We, yeah, we need, absolutely. we have practiced this part, but so the background behind this, um, this series of talks it, and it, it kind of came to me, I guess, first, but as always, Peter and I are always, I think, on the same page and we we discuss ideas for, for meetup presentations. But for me personally, this kind of came up when we were doing, especially WordPress 6.2 recently, where, um, you know, we've had a lot of big WordPress releases, I'd say, in the past year or so. And, and every time I look at what's happening in WordPress, I'm, I'm always impressed. You know, I, I've said before, I think the the first WordPress meetup that I hosted when we kind of um, restarted the Hartford WordPress group was, was Gutenberg. Like, what is Gutenberg? And that was all the way back in 2019, 18, I forget, somewhere, somewhere around there. So long. And, and just to see where it's come since then, um, you know, there's so much that's been added into WordPress core that sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll speak for myself, I'm guilty of forgetting that, oh, wait, that's there. Oh, I don't need to do that anymore. Oh, I don't need this other, again, we, we use a lot of our sites, um, we build on Cadence. So I, I very much appreciate the Cadence theme and Cadence blocks and, and other themes, similar block-based themes. But sometimes you kind of forget that there's a lot just baked into WordPress core itself, and you may not need an additional set of block plugins or you know, there may be functionality built into just what you get for free with WordPress that you may not even be aware of. So that that kind of motivated this. I, I thought, you know, with all of the releases we've had of WordPress at this point, at least for us, for our group, this is a good time to maybe pause, take a take a bit of a deep breath and really look at what we have available to us in WordPress core in, in the blocks. So again, there's a lot of blocks that come with WordPress now. So we thought what we'd start with is probably the most common ones that people use, and that's the text blocks. Um, and as you can see up here, this you know this image shows you all the text blocks. So what we're going to try to do is over the course of um, a couple of meetups, and we won't do this necessarily sequentially, you know, through the end of the year, but we want to we want to always go back to and cover what's in the core blocks. So for this first series, we're saying you know, part one, part two. We're going to try to do a real deep dive, deep look into the text blocks. So that's that's kind of the the thought behind it. So you know, again, today we're starting really with those first three, but then the other ones we're going to cover um, in in a part two. Uh, Peter, any yeah. Thoughts? So uh, you know, we 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 see and work with a lot of a lot of folks who are using the various tools out there. Um, I attend a lot of meetups and listen to podcasts, and and you hear people talk about all the things that they don't like about some of the things in a block editor. And one of the challenges is, well, have you used it lately? And have you used it to its fullest extent? And very often, you know, I might even hear things saying, oh, well, you can't do that. I'm like, you can. And, and you wonder, is it simply because somebody hasn't been exposed to whether they try it themselves or somebody just show them a quick little thing? So that's part of what we do you know, even it may seem so basic and yet somebody might go, I didn't know I could do that. Or a combination of this, that, and that now gives me something else. And then also we'll be talking a little bit about um, what does and doesn't work um, dependent on themes. And so the more you're aware of kind of how things uh, work with these and especially with the text blocks, you know, it's a good basis because, you know, what we're going to be show will apply to almost every block. Um, so, uh, thought that this was a good way to kind of say, you know, revisit this whole what the what the power of of just these simple core blocks could be, could bring. All right, so um, hopefully that makes sense for folks, and that's kind of where we're going to be starting with. Peter, do you want me to um, hand you control? Yeah. Yep. Right, stop share. Yeah, I will grab the screen right there. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the lowly default block, the paragraph block, which is 
really powerful in a lot of ways. Um, it is the default black block. You start typing, you're typing in a paragraph block. You hit enter, and if you and you know by default you're at the paragraph block until you change it to something else. So you hit slash or you select from your inserter. But if you're just typing on the keyboard, and if you're and if you're the kind of person who, and I'm not that person at this point, who goes into the, the distraction-free mode and you just want to uh, add content. Um, we're looking at the paragraph block is 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 where we um, where we're spending a lot of our time. Um, so it's the most ubiquitous ubiquitous block. It is often used within other blocks and block patterns. So there are some things that are presented as a block, but when you look at it, it's actually well, that's a paragraph inside of a thing inside of a thing. Um, so. You know, when you look at the list view, which um, I, I have up pretty much all the time because it really shows me where I am working on it, you can see, oh, that paragraph block, look at them all, but look at where they sit inside of other things. Um, paragraph block blocks can be transformed into several other blocks. Many blocks can be transformed into other blocks. The paragraph block um, has a lot of options because ultimately when you first start with it it's just text so you can turn that text into a, into a lot of other things by using the 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 power of the transformation button um which will which will show um and so because of that you can do that um you can consider adding a content as just paragraphs and then transform in style as desired so defining a workflow you may discover that Hey, instead of laboring over each piece as I'm doing it, it's like, you know what, just load your content or type your content, or, you know, maybe you're copying and pasting it from another uh, document. That's part of what I'm going to do right here. Um, and then from there, now you can, I'm going to keep it as, as a paragraph and I'm going to style it differently, or I'm going to, I'm going to uh, take that and transform it into another block, maybe a heading, maybe a list, maybe something like that. Um, so that paragraph block is just, that's the starting point for, for uh, content. Um, in the uh, wordpress.org um, site, we have under the documentation, customization, text blocks, and you can choose paragraph block. Uh, there's a lot of the information that will show us everything that we need. So instead of recreating this, this page, actually, they're doing a really good job. And what I really appreciate it, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here, if anyone hasn't been here lately, is we are now getting change logs uh, also in documentation. So it's nice to know how old something is. The documentation team has grown a lot on the um, on the make.wordpress.org uh, side of things. So, you know, a lot of work is going into keeping um, on top of documentation and it's really, it's really useful. So, you know, I'm using this as a guide to come back and say, okay, am I covering everything in the toolbar and all and all of these things, but we'll do uh, uh, a, the live demo of that. So let's just, uh, let's hop into that. Um, I'm working in, um, uh, Ray and I both have uh, two different demo sites that we're working on. So I'm using something that is just a, Kind of a sandbox for me. I'm calling it the FSE um, uh, at ingersollwp.com. The only reason is because I've been swapping in themes in and out. We'll do a little bit of that tonight too to show uh, what doesn't doesn't work. So I'm going to edit this post, and what I'm actually going to do is uh, instead of showing this all here, I am going to I just hit enter a bunch of times and look. I've added all of these paragraphs. Um, so you know you can see in your in your uh, list view all the paragraphs. I'm going to come over to uh, a lot of the copy that I have, I'm, I've got a, uh, I'll just show you, I've got a, a, a uh, Google Doc over here. I'm grabbing this text, copying it, control C. Um, and then let me bring this back over here. And I'll do a control, uh, you know, paste this plain text. So I've just brought in, uh, cutting and pasting all of that. Now I can say, oh, I've got all these other things I don't need. Um, I can... Uh, highlight them. Let's see, this is where the list view is very handy because you can see everything that you've got highlighted and then go to remove the blocks just there by clicking on that. You'll see there's redundancy here because it's actually the same text, but this is where we'll just show the different types of things that we can do in the uh, paragraph block. Um, so when you click on a paragraph block, when you enter a paragraph block, you get your toolbar. Um, maybe you're floating it, you're setting it to the top. I, I keep it 
on the on the page, uh, uh, you know, next to the thing that I'm on, so you, it moves with me. You can pin it to the Peter, top. Can I, sorry, can I just yeah. interrupt real quick? Because there's a good question in the chat, just for context. So, which can you explain which theme are you using? Yes. Yeah, so, I, I specifically chose to start in 2023. All right. Thanks. Yeah, the default theme, and we're going to play with themes on the end, but uh, it's a good question. That's And the theme uh, is driving how things work, how things show on the front end. Um, when you are when you set up your editor, you say, you know, use my uh, style sheets to show that on the, on the editing side. So you'll have continuity between the two, a little bit different than the classic editor where you're, you know, working in a, um, in a sort of WYSIWYG box. So, but yeah the the theme we'll we'll play with that too to, sh to show the differences and and what the themes what the themes do um so with this toolbar without getting into all the details of all the other blocks but this is where if you click on the paragraph now these are things that you can transform it to and what's a nice new feature of wordpress is you get the you get a live um preview on this side to the right and it's actually using the content um this is a really nice little feature. So you could say, okay, if I turn out no heading, that's what it looks like. A list item, now one bullet point. If I'd hi highlighted multiple uh, paragraphs, so put each one of those, what what would a quote look like? Um, and how you might turn it into pull quotes. Um, advanced text is actually a cadence block that's live. So you can transform it into um, blocks that are not just core blocks that work. So. Um, this is that whole idea that you could just enter your text and then change it into something else. So maybe I do want to change this. We'll spend a little bit more time on the heading, but maybe I do want to change it to, you know, um, a heading uh, style. When you get into the uh, specifics, now again, with the tool toolbar, um, real quick while we're here, this is the drag and drop to move for people who haven't used it. So you can uh, drag something and it'll show you where you're at with the blue bar. Uh, you can also use the arrow up and down, and you can also see it's reflected here um, in the list view. So quick, you know, navigating uh, your blocks. Um, so moving to some specifics. So as simple as it says, bold text, I'm in a paragraph. You know, it may seem obvious, but you've got the option for bold. Um, italic text. Italic. Uh, bold and italic, you just turn them both on. Okay. Um, now you can also center, align center, uh, align right. Um, so that's just how how the text is showing um, on the screen. If you want to uh, drop just a paragraph right in this and center it, you certainly can do that. Um, I'm I'm not really a um, center text kind of person. I, there's an accessibility issue because of the way things are read, but that is, uh, you have that alignment uh, capability right there. Um, let's see, adding um, a link is just as simple as highlighting, clicking the link, and then you could type in, um, well, let's, maybe our previous link. So that was just what um, when you click on the link, it'll say, okay, what, what's there? If you, if you have a URL, you could just type it in. Or one thing you could also do, if you don't know that, you can highlight. And if you've copied a URL, you could just now paste it over this text, and it'll make that a live link, keeping the text, uh, linking to the link that you pasted over that. So there's a lot of neat little functionality there. Um, now, when you get into this this down more button. This is when you get a whole lot of other functions. So highlighting. Highlighting is basically um, the color of the text. One thing to always keep in mind is as defined by your theme. And some themes might do even more to highlighting. Um, you can always change it. Um, there's different ways to change it in CSS and classic themes, changing it in some of the options. Um, uh, themes.json and block themes. If these are all, you know, some of these are advanced techniques, but most themes will have a, a default value for a lot of these, uh, a lot of this. Now in, in this particular uh, example, if I wanted to make this um, highlighted text and I click on, on that, this theme right now has, um, these are the default colors, um, not really great for this. So we can maybe pick another, uh, color from from the color 
uh, palette or better yet, if you had a better color palette or loaded a color palette or had a block, uh, a, a theme variation. So the 2023 default theme, we have different theme variations. We can go back to that later where you can have different colors right there. But say you do that, well, now my text is that color. So that, that um, and I'm going to highlight it just to make it a little bit easier. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but that's the, uh, the highlight. Um, inline code is an interesting thing. This is if you want to, and again, depending on your format, probably not going to be used by too many folks, but it actually changes the text to more of your, what you might use if you're a coder and it's um, uh, the width are all the same. I can't even think of the word for that. The, the, um, instead of having, you know, an I thinner than a W, they're all the same width because that's typically what you would have in, in code. So um, that, that is an option uh, for you. Um, now, as we get into the, the, the coloring of code will show, um, let's see, what I write here is so highlighted text, just background color. Okay, both text and background colors. Right, so um, one of the other things that you can do is combine this with, and now I'm on the right side, we'll come back to all these drop downs, but we can, we can put other colors behind uh, a paragraph. So now that's that's a function of the, the block option. So if you go, when you highlight the block, um, on the right side, if you've enabled or if you're showing your, your options panel, on the right, you go to the block option. So now you have uh, the ability to change the text color completely. Um, and here's an example where I change it to this terrible lime green color. Let me change it to at least, you know, a purple color. But because I already turned this highlighted color into, you know, that for the, specifically that text, um, that overrides because you have over here, you're setting the text color. Um, if you want to change it from default, the background color, if you want to set something differently, you can make the whole paragraph. I mean, you can make, sorry, you can change the link um, color from the default to something specific. And you may want to do that if in fact you've changed the background color. So now you get this idea of like, well, maybe I made the um, the background color um, a, a dark color, and then I wanna make my text a light color, and then my default link might need to be a different color and you would choose that. So you've got options on how you can style just by choosing your, your text color, your background color, your link color, and then through your your choices up here, um, being able to to even further define. Basically, you're setting. Um, if you know about CSS and styles, you're you're setting the style uh, of that piece of text, and then your theme, your CSS sheets, the things that are just that define what things look like on your page. Now say, okay, well, this is. Uh, highlighted text, and um, here's the here the here here are the colors you can use. Um, inline code again is that whole idea of being you know what's the default, and you might you know make it Courier New or Lucinda. These are these are fonts that are are good for showing code, um, and uh, you know having that capability is is pretty handy. One of the things I find kind of interesting, uh, I don't think I have. Oh, I do. I'll come. I'll come to it in a second. Um, the inline image trying to follow is a little bit wonky uh, in that I'm not sure when you would need it versus just putting an image. Other than if you wanted to go and put in, you know, this little guy uh, within the body of your text and and make it maybe maybe you want a little, oh, you know, a little version inline text, it'll put, it'll put that image right in the middle of your text. So you can, you have that option in the paragraph block uh, to go to the choice and put an inline image um, there and, and, and then have the controls on how you might want to chain. Maybe that is, is, is too small and you want to make it a little bit larger um, knowing that it'll push the text down, but you, that's what that choice is inline uh, text. The keyboard um, input is something, again, more on the technical side. It's kind of like, and very often looks exactly like the, um, the code, um, but in some styling, it might be um, actually 
styled to look like a keystroke or like uh, a gray box with a line around it. So if you wanted, if, in this example, I'm saying, you know, hey, if you hit Control plus the plus sign, you can zoom, uh, you can zoom in. And if I wanted to now make that look like uh, the keyboard inputs here, it changed it. And in some styles and some, you, that'll that'll end up. Um, uh, looking like you know a little box around it again defined by your style sheet your theme um strike through text we'll just do that again choosing uh strike through um if that is something you want to use um subscript and superscript sound just like they that, that you might ex expect so subscript drops you know maybe you've got footnotes um or you're doing something with math uh, and, you, and you will need to use uh, subscript and superscript. Um, one of the comments I uh, had for myself is also the useful the usefulness of the empty paragraph. This is something you get into um, when all of a sudden you, you know, you're making a, putting a column and you, and you need to put something in something. Sometimes just dropping a paragraph acts like a placeholder that you can work around. So that paragraph can be very handy. Um, one other thing I want to show you in terms of the the this right side uh, option, and I'll, I'll close my list view for a minute. We'll play with this paragraph where I've got some background text, um, and a you know having the ability to to um, center things down. Here's what's interesting, and again, it may be uh, determined by style, but in some cases you actually can set whether something is widescreen or not. And I think it's a func that ends up being a function of what theme you have. So if you have a theme that allows um, uh, something to go a full width, for example, you can actually make a paragraph, fill an entire, uh, make a band across the, the, the screen if your theme allows that. Um, but what you also have the ability to do is under, again, in a, in a block theme, you have the ability to um, work with the, the not only the size of the text using this is kind of typical, but you also have the the dimensions option. So you can look at the padding, you can look at the margins. I just turn those so I can see them on the, on the screen. So now maybe I've got this. It's a it's a simple paragraph, but I might want to make the text uh, large um, and make uh, a lot more padding so that I've got this, this kind of, you know, very large, we'll take a look on the, on the front end kind of block. That's still just a paragraph, except now the styling being defined by just, you know, these options that I have right here on my, my block options. Um, they allow me to really do a lot of formatting that you can, you can call out something, you can highlight something. Peter, uh, can I ask a question? You sure can. Okay, on this paragraph you just built, yeah. if you use their small, medium, large, and extra large options, as opposed to putting in a particular font, a uh, pixel size, does that work on mobile so you don't have to go back and change what you see on mobile or desktop? Yeah. Um... I thought that was like grunt or something, glamp. Uh, yeah, clamp. Got, clamp, thank you. Yeah, so the status of fluid typography using clamp, I think is it's we're right on the cusp of it being, you know, really universally understood. Honestly, I haven't used it. I'm not using block themes, probably, Sue, as you know. Um, for can, can you preview this paragraph and change your browser and make it mobile-sized or any other resource you use for that? And we can start right here. Yeah, that's really not. Nice. So it yeah. it didn't really do what I thought I was hoping it would do. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Yeah. So that that's yeah. the one thing I know ends up being still the, the concern. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I mean, again, in terms of the uh, there's, I forget who actually uses the phrase the most. This you know, there's there are a lot of ways to WordPress. Yeah. Um, say you wanted to go just with this. Even the visibility um, uh, plugin that I just showed, uh, while it's not necessarily built into this theme to give you those those you know mobile tablet 
uh, and desktop options that we might see, say, in a cadence, for example. Mm -hmm. You could create one block that you show only on mobile and style it for mobile and one block and use something. Yeah, use yeah. It. I know, yeah. I know. Not, 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 not anything that I would necessarily be a, a, a it, fan of, but... Uh, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It, it's hey, a lot of work. Hey, Peter, there's another comment back to your earlier thing where you were trying to, you were trying to make that paragraph be widescreen. Yeah. Um, e Elisa, I believe, in the chat mentioned that if you put that into a group... Yes. Then you could... So it would be the same if you put into like a row or something else to it. Yeah. So in terms of uh, like trans transforming and the group is a great example of something that's really powerful. The um, the group block uh, allows you to do a lot more with the content that's inside it. In fact, you can have a whole bunch of things and then group them all together. It's kind of why it's called a group block. And we'll uh, cover that in one of our future. Yeah. <laughs> but, you're, but this is, you know, yeah. where... Um, Let's see what this looks like on the front end. Sometimes this is an example of where, see, I think this theme has got, you know, a, a kind of a fixed width. Um, so why don't we do this real quick and go to, um, I will go to my appearance themes. And this is a good example of looking at, we'll look at this here. And then if I go and play and turn it to, well, here's a few, I'll turn, I'll activate cadence. We'll refresh that. And then see now that's full width um, because Cadence has that option. A lot of the, most of the stuff is, is pretty close, but the fonts and all change. Um, and this is, there's, if you're starting a site, you, you may find that there's an opportunity to kind of start with something basic and then try different themes on what you've done and then see if there's something that kind of gives you the, 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 the best of both worlds i've been one of the themes that i thought was kind of interesting this is this is a block theme the guten gutenify theme but there's different there's a whole bunch of gutenify themes out there um so this is the base one i think i loaded uh i know i saw one over here so blog uh template kit which and they have their own thing but now if i activate this and then I go and refresh this, you know, we'll see something different now. Their default has a sidebar and they've got, you know, um, behind the title. But this is where now you have block themes that have defined a whole lot more. But see, the font has changed and some of the, the, the colors that are the default colors have changed and things like that. So the theme is incredibly powerful as i've said in many many meetups the 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 thing to be aware of is if we show you something in a demo and then you go back to yours and it says it doesn't look anything like that it may simply be because of the theme that you're using um frost is a um uh, brian gardner um has frost on and maybe i didn't load it here i thought i did uh frost which is which is a great minimalistic theme um but it is going to Take that same thing and pretty, it's pretty, you know, stripped down uh, basically. But you can see the things that you have already um, spent time customizing using those choices. Like again, this block, uh, this paragraph block that I've given a background color and the white uh, color. But here's an example of in, in the Frost theme, his highlighted text also includes this kind of quite honestly, in my opinion, wonky underline. Um, I might talk to him about that and go, that's an interesting choice. Cause when I, on the back end, if I uh, went to this, let me, uh, let me update this and refresh it. Um, and this is, you know, when you refresh, uh, when you've got a theme loaded, um, WordPress is applying the style to the editor. If you have that, it's by default, I think it's usually on, but this now looks, more like frost because I've done that. And again, where I've highlighted the text. So when I make that choice here, highlight and say, I wanna make, and see my color choices are different because this theme is giving me these colors. Um, but now, you know, again, he's got, I say he, cause I happen to know the person who makes this, um, has this underline. So again, driven, uh, defined by the, the theme. Um, 
So there are a, a whole lot of things, and maybe we can get into specific things. The the dimensions um, are are going to be on your block themes, and sometimes in your what we're calling classic themes: Astra, um, Cadence, Generate Press, Bloxy. Those are kind of the four that are on my short list. Um, and probably any number that you're using. So these do not always show up um, in, in, in that case, um, that theme may have its own version of the way spacing works. Um, I, I really like, and I, I would like to see things like dimensions be more universal and have closer to core. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that's, did I miss anything that you can think of? Um, How about showing, um... Peter, I know this isn't necessarily specific to the block, um, the paragraph block itself, but can you show the thing we were showing a little bit earlier about the word count piece and like how, you know, if you select multiple paragraphs, how that gets updated as well, you know, in the outline view? Yeah, yeah. So if we're looking at your list view, you have the option of the uh, of looking at the combiner. There used to be a little info button up here. Now it's part of the list view. If you click on that, so that you're seeing instead of the list, you're seeing uh, the outline. Um, you you get the the characters, the words, the the time to read. Um, you also get your layout in terms of um, uh, how your headings, and we'll show that uh, when we talk about headings. Um, and did that you said that changed because I haven't uh, tried that. If um, you um, if you go back to list view and just select. Select like a couple paragraph, like multi-select a couple paragraphs. See how it says in the upper right underneath your blocks is three blocks, 48 words. You also get that kind of mini count yeah. you know, above color. So that's just another neat thing that people may miss. Above color. Oh, right. Over the right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, you know, having that much more information about what and how you're writing, um, this idea that you can, if you, you know, drop in a whole lot of text just as straight text and then start formatting it all, um, modifying your workflow, looking to see, you know, when you get things like and the basic outline and it shows you, hey, this is three minutes to read. Obviously, this is, you know, a little bit of uh, crazy content, but um, yeah. So the the paragraph block, lots of things that you can do. Yep. Go ahead. You also put in the comments. Um, does full site editing have the headings outline so you can see if you're using them in the right order? And I think you just answered that, right? Because that's a full site. Yes. So that's a function of your in your outline. You mean this here, where you can see all your headings. If I if I made this um, only only the uh, core blocks though. Um, so if I put a heading in, like using advanced uh, headings, I thought if it... you use like uh, generate blocks or spectra or cadence blocks, then they don't pick up the heading listing. Well, gotcha. There well, you... hold off on the headings until we get to that. Yeah. That next. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's a good thing to know. And we will come back to that. So. Yeah, this this is. I think let's. Um, I can jump into the list. I'll take over. Yep, and come back. Okay. One second here. So that's you know, there's a lot to that, and, and we're going to see a little bit of overlap because obviously all of these are kind of under the umbrella of the the text box. So some of the things I'll show are probably things that other apply to the paragraph block and and vice versa. So give me a second. Let me share my screen. All right. So list the the uh, the list block the. Um, much misunderstood of the tiny list block. <laughs> it doesn't seem like there's a lot to it. So you start diving into some of these blocks. Like, oh yeah, there's actually a lot here. So, you know, like what is a, a list block? I mean, it's basically under the covers, you know, HTML has the idea of lists. You know, so a, a list element is something that allows you to group a set of related items. Um, and there's a couple of types of lists. You know, there's ordered lists, kind of, you know, that's the HTML tag for OL, unordered lists, UL. There's another weird one too called description lists, which really don't get used that often. It's it's kind of like a key value pair. Um, so WordPress doesn't support that. It just supports ordered lists and, un, and unordered lists. And they call ordered lists in WordPress um, numbered lists and the other one's called bulleted lists. So this is, um, again, we'll I'll jump to the demo. Let me jump to my list block demo, which I have over here. 
So I'm also just, I think it's a, I'm glad somebody asked it earlier. So just so we, we're all on the same page, I'm using, I also have Frost installed. I'm using the, um, I'm using a non full site editor theme just to throw another thing into the mix. So I'm using the, the 2021 theme because uh, I actually found that full site editing was was messing with a couple things I was I wanted for the demo just to keep things simple and focused. So that's that's what I'm using 2021. Uh, and let me go to this page. So so let's start with something really simple about um, uh, list block demo here. Starting with how do you add a list block? So just like everything, just like paragraphs too, there's there's more than one way to add a list block um, onto your page or post. So first off, if you already have text, so let's say you already have a paragraph block, and, and this question came up a little bit earlier too, um, Peter, I think you missed this in the chat, but somebody's asking a question in the chat window about when you copy and pasted your text from Word, it basically yes. kept all of the line breaks it looked like. So it created a whole set of paragraphs based on right. that. And a question came up regarding, is there any way to control that so that you can just have a single paragraph when you paste it versus all the line breaks? I think the answer we agreed on the chat is no, there's not, unless you, unless you go back and do something like this. So in this case, I have a single paragraph, but I put in line breaks myself manually by hitting shift enter. I think from a copy and paste, as far as I'm aware of, there's no way to like have it all paste into one paragraph block. Yeah, and and again, unless you've done, that's when I go and use like a text editor, like Notepad. Yeah, or Sue but, was mentioning as well, like doing some additional step of like from a styling standpoint, removing the making them soft breaks instead of hard breaks. So, but anyway, so from a, a list, um, a list block standpoint, just as um, we've seen for other blocks too. So I have a single paragraph block at this point, I can say, and this is probably something we haven't covered much too, but not every block can be transformed into another type of block. So um, I don't know if there's an exhaustive list of this, but in this case, a paragraph can be transformed into a list block. And as Peter showed earlier, you get a preview of this. So in this case, if I transform this ordered list um, by default, it's actually gonna put it in, into an unordered list. So unordered list, also called bulleted list, as you can see, everyone has a dot next to it. Um, and what, what got created here is, if you look off on the side, this is kind of neat, it's the idea of a collection. So you'll see this in, in other blocks as well, like the gallery block, and there's a few other blocks that do this. So the idea is that this list block is actually a collection of list items underneath. And, and that's, that's a real powerful thing too, that that allows you that ability to really do different styling, you know, for items and, and just have a lot more granular control than just having everything as part of a, you know, a single list collection. Um, but at the list parent level, if you will, you know, so the, not a specific item at the list parent level, that's where you get some of the properties that I'll go into a little bit later. Um, but just sticking with right now of how do you create a list that's one way, you know, you can select an existing, uh, an existing paragraph and say, hey, I want to con convert that into a, uh, a list block. And as I said, by default, it, de it defaults to the, the unordered list or the bolded list. Well, luckily you can just switch it over because I know that the presidents are in order. So I can switch that with one click into an, an ordered list. So now it's numbered and I'll show a little bit more of the styling of the, the two different list types in a second, but. So that's, that's one way. So you can select an existing paragraph block, a single paragraph block and say, turn that into a list. The other way you can do it is in this case, I've got uh, several paragraphs. I've got just colors, you know, in no particular order. And I can select all of these together, all the colors and say, hey, I wanna turn these into a list. So same thing, it took all of those, you know, separate paragraph items and turned them into list items now under a list. In this case, I'm going to keep it as an, an ordered, um, I'm sorry, an unordered list because there's no particular order to these colors. So that's a second way. You can select a single paragraph or multiple paragraph and, and turn them into lists. Um, the other way is just like any other block, you know, if you're either up here in the, um, the, the heading, the block inserter, or if you have the block inserter on a blank line, um, I'm, I'll just put on a blank line over here one second. Uh, on, a, on a blank line, I can hit the plus sign here, and one of the items that comes up is list. So that's that's another way to add a list just from scratch. And by default, again, it goes to the, the unordered list. And finally, kind of the neat one, if if you're very familiar with, I'll put it on all the way at the bottom here. If you're familiar with Word, 
you know, Word and, and other um, uh, other tools, they'll create lists for you using some short shorthand. So uh, and I'm not talking about this. Here's another <laughs> WordPress. There's always multiple ways to do it. If you, if you do a slash, you can do any you know block item here. What I'm talking about is if you start off putting a, a, a dash, that turns it into a list. That'll turn it into an unordered list, just like it does in Word. Or if you want an ordered list, if you put in one dot, you know, here's my first item, et cetera, et cetera. And it keeps it inside of a list. So that, that was, you know, back to the thing about staying within the editor so you don't have to keep jumping out and thinking about, oh, this is a list. I need to add this as a special block. If you're very familiar with like a word processing flow of Microsoft Word or something, you can just keep your head into that space. You know, if, if you're doing this automatic list adding to get out of it, you just hit enter, just like you do in Word, you hit enter twice and now it kicks you out of that list item adding mode. So that those are the main ways that you can add lists and, and add items into lists. Now let's look at styling a little bit more. Um, One other way is you can select multiple paragraphs and and change change to a list, and it'll it'll make all three like those three paragraphs there. It would put them into a single list. Right, and that's kind of what and you're talking about, like what I did with this red, blue, green, yellow, and pink. These were separate paragraphs. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So let's look at some of the styling again. So back to the ordered list, for example. So there's, there's some neat things you can do with, with ordered lists. So one thing by default, it's gonna start your ordered list with, you know, um, with number one. So everything in, in your list is, you know, starts with one down, but you can change that. So for whatever reason, I wanna start my order list starting at number five, whatever. I'm not sure why, but anyway, so you, you can, you don't have to start with a, a one value. You can start with anything. Um, you can change the reverse the list numbering. Just you know, click click right there. Um, so it flips it around from you know five down. Um, the other thing is inside of a list itself, any particular list item, you can also sub indent them. So like for example, a one now you're know, gonna have John Adams here, and if for some reason I want to go two levels deep, I can I can do that as well. So now this also can go deeper. So just, again, if you think about word or other word processing, you now, if you look over here, the interesting thing is now we have collections of lists within lists within lists. And you can go on this ad infinitum. So just you know, be careful, don't get lost in your list. But yeah, this, as I said, this should be very familiar with, um, with people using word or, or other types of you know, word processing editors. Um, on the unordered list, probably not as interesting, but I'll show some of the things that, um, Peter showed as well too. So because a list is, you know, again, it's part of this text block family, um, you do have access to the same kinds of um, styling settings that you do for text blocks. Not all of them, but, you know, for example, you can change the color of the text and change the background color of the text. So just to I'll change it to something gross like that, or, and then background, let's make it something awful like that and text sizes, et cetera, et cetera. So, you, you do have those same kind of properties that you do with any other any other text item. Um, if you want to do just somebody had mentioned before about groups as well too. So let's say I want to put um, let's go to this one for a second. You know one of the things that's not available here is borders, for example. So if I do want to put this into um, let's say I want a border around this list, I can do that not through the list itself, but if I want to put it into a group. So now I've got a group. I didn't lose my list. It's just, it's contained. You know, the group is really a, a kind of a container block. So now that I'm, my list is contained in a group, now I can do things like, you know, put a border on it and, and do additional styling that applies to groups. So that's one way where it's, it's a weird transformation. You're not really transforming it into a group. You're basically putting it inside of a group as, as container. So that's, um, so that's the basic stylings that you get out of the box, you know, it seems like it's a fairly simple, um, a fairly simple block. But as I said, there's a, there's a lot of things you can do, um, you know, just using the controls and using the the GUI. Uh, <clears throat> How did you make it a group? Because it was already one thing, right? I kind of missed yeah. that. Yeah. So let me remove the group. It was just as simple as I had a list here. I had a, a list yep. of items. And then that within my transformation up here, I transform it to, I put it okay. into basically a group. Okay. I missed that. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, you, you can group one thing and then have all the power of the group. Yeah. yeah that's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. It's a group of one. <laughs> 
So let me let me ungroup it. Hold on a second. Uh, remove group. Um, so that's that's like what you get out of the box. But there are other properties to list. So I'm showing just kind of quickly because these these are going to be CSS things. But just so you're aware of it, if you have a need for something like this. So on the unordered list, oops, did I get rid of my unordered list? Hold when on. you remove the group, it removes <laughs> anything in the group. I, I don't want to get rid of my list. I want to keep my list. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that that that's true. Eagle, what, what Eagle said was really important. Okay. Um, remove the group, remove everything in the group. Oh, you know, I removed my ordered list. That's what I did by mistake. Sorry. I was like, where did my ordered list go to? Let me move my ordered list just out of here and get rid of the group. By the way, con control Z is your friend. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, so I've got my ordered list, uh, unordered list, and actually I think I've disregarded these headings right now. These, these kind of don't apply. So I'm gonna show just a couple of real quick things with CSS. Again, don't, don't be afraid of CSS. But in this case, this list is the ordered list. Um, and let me uh, just unindent these things just so we'll get them back to where they were before. So we've got just an ordered list, five items in here. And I'm gonna add a class to this. Um, so again, lists just like many other blocks, you can add a, a, a CSS class of your own. So I'll call this um, order list style. And then the unordered one, I'm going to add another class in here called uh, unordered list style, unordered list style. And then this guy, I have to make sure I remember these, these class names. I'm going to call this um, long list style. At this point, I've just added classes. There's no code behind it yet, so I'm just saving these. But what I want to show is now if we go, I'll show this. Maybe this is why I switched to the, the non-block editor view. So if I go back to my um, list block demo, we'll just view this. I'm going to show this in the customizer so I can show you some CSS around this. OK, so one of the first things you, you can do with the unordered list is, um, actually with both of them, is you can change the markers. So, you know, these circle markers that we have here. So let's say on my, um, what was it? The, the unordered list style. So here's how you write a, a CSS rule, which I'm sure most people are familiar with. So one of the options here is list style, list style type. Style, type, list style, style type. And what I can do here is I can change this from that circle to let's say I want to make it a square instead. Um, or in this case, I wanted to change it to, um, oh, this is my unordered list. So I want to change it to a disk, disk circle. There's a circle. I can change it to none, and get rid of that entirely. And there's an example I'll show later where you can remove that. So Ray, this, uh, Sherry was asking, and and we were giving some answers that you're giving much more efficient answers if if Sherry wanted to touch CSS. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> was there a question about it? Or, I'm sorry, what was that? exactly what you're talking about? Creating oh, okay. a list and then not showing the marker. Yeah. For the yeah. And I'll show. So the ordered list one, it's it's similar. So I can do lists um, style type. And this one, I. I think the, the styles are, if I remember, it's a, there's like an L, um, it's a lower alpha, I think. Yeah, so you can change that from numbers to lower alpha case. So you see the ones turn into A's. You can also change it into things like upper Roman, I think is another one. You can change it to Roman numerals. So it's not something that it's ex is exposed by the list block itself, but just one line of, you know, one line of CSS, basically you can change that pretty quickly. Um, I'll show another quick one too, just kind of a, a goofy one is, um, oh, it's for the long list. So let me, this unfortunately applied to everybody, so I, I don't want to get rid of that. Let's get rid of these styles now for a second, put them back to the way that they were. Um, the other thing I could do is if you want to change it to an image. So for example, I want to do, I guess I'll do the unordered, unordered list style. In this one, you can actually replace it entirely with something silly like here. I'll just put this URL in here because this is actually on my website. I can change that to this GIF. Where did you go? Unordered 
list style. What did I? Oh, I'm sorry. I need to change the um, list style image. So the, the property is list style image, and then you put the URL of what we're going to change it to. So in this case, it's just silly little smiley faces. So, you know, again, you want something that's small. You want something that's um, uh, hopefully cached on your site. So you're not making additional calls just to do that. So that's those are the kinds of things you can do. The, the long list one, just give me one second, because I think I actually screwed that up. Um, what I was going to show there with CSS is changing the position of that. But I think I accidentally removed that. Oh, I didn't turn that into a list yet. That's the problem. So back to, let's say these two items, um, you know, lists could be long paragraphs. So in this case, I have two long paragraphs and I'm going to turn these into a list, uh, transform them into a list. And I'm going to add my, my class in here to say long list style. Update that again. Let's Sorry, I'm moving a little bit quick here. I just want to make sure from a time standpoint. Oh, I missed one. Uh, this is what happens when you when you type too quick. I missed that guy. Uh, I want to put him into. Uh, so let me do this. No, I've got too many selected. Basically, what I was going to show, and I'm running out of time. I want to be conscious of what Peter is doing as well. Is you can also change where these marker positions are. Like right now, by default, the marker um, bullets are inside indented. You can mm -hmm. change it so that so everything here is line. As you see the here, the text is all lining up, um, and the marker is separate. In this case, if you had some long text, maybe you want it so that the the text continues to line up, but the marker is just you know part of that text. So that's that's another property you can you can change as well as the position of the marker. So that's something you can do in CSS, say inside or outside. So again, probably not a probably very limited use case of that, um, but that's something to be aware of. And later, if we have time, I'll show one more thing about lists, which is the right now all the lists I'm showing are vertical. You can also change them to make a list horizontal instead. And where you where you see that maybe unbeknownst. To, to most people is if you look at the menus on your site, these are lists. Yep. These are you know unordered lists, but they're basically an unordered list that is showing horizontally instead of vertically. And that's just a, a styling thing. So that's the the lowly list. So back to you, Peter, for the headings. Right. Did I miss anything? I'm sorry, was there any questions in the chat that um... well, you covered the 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 bullet question. Um, I think we're going to probably want to review some of the questions and allow people to remind us what we may have. Right. Cool. All righty. So, all righty. Do you see the presentation? Yep. Okay. So we'll go to the heading block. Oh, I was already on it. That's why. All right. So uh, heading blocks. We've you know, I'm sure everybody's familiar with, with them to some extent. We've already showed them, transformed some things into heading blocks. We'll do a little bit more than that. But uh, the purpose of the heading blocks are to add uh, organizing formatted text. Um, it can be very tempting to use heading blocks for just formatting. Um, try not to. That's an accessibility issue. Um, they The headings are used to help people who, who are using things like screen readers all to understand the format of a text and, and, and even navigate a format of a, of a post uh, or page and even navigate uh, using those heading blocks. So really think about them in terms of how they organize it. We've talked about you know that it's your, you're creating your, your outline um, when you look at how the headings work. Um, using those H2, H3 in the proper uh, outline order uh, H1 is the page title in, in WordPress generally. Um, I'm sure templates can change that and all, uh, uh, but generally the H1, uh, which is why you don't typically see the H1 as a choice um, or, or, or something to use, it's because of how it's used. Uh, again, initial formatting defined by the theme. Um, can, it can be customized depending how the theme offers that customization to you. Uh, maybe we'll spend even a little bit of time looking at on the full site editing side when you go into now the new um, uh, style guide, what is the uh, style book to be able to look at how all of your blocks format in that, you know, in, in this style as defined by the theme. Um, 
So used by the table of contents blocks, um, for example, right now on in this presentation, this is a table of contents block. It's not a core block. This is a cadence block, but it's using the structure of the heading. So heading the heading block can be used by other purposes. We'll, that outline view that we already uh, showed, we'll show again. And things like a, a table of contents block. There's there's a number of table of contents blocks out there. Uh, many in packages that we've recognized, the Spectre package, the cadence, and, and so on. So um, using these headings, this this is created automatically just by us, um, you know, it, using the heading block here. This is an H2 on this slide. And I told this table of contents block to only look at H2s. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about like things, even simple things like keyboard shortcuts that you might uh, might not know about. So if we go over to, um, now I, I changed this back to the, um, the 2023 theme, we will uh, look at this in different themes so that you kind of see. And it's as, as simple as these are all paragraph blocks. Like I said, the default paragraph. Um, oh, and there was one question before I forget. I, I forgot who asked, but that whole, the topic about uh, putting everything in kind of one paragraph block, but with the line feeds built into it. Mm -hmm. That's where the you know moving the toolbar of the way going to distraction free mode where you're not looking the you know where you're kind of ignoring the fact that things are in blocks that's what the intention is behind some of the distraction free and um the, what's the two choices uh distraction free and and putting the toolbar at the top so right so we get the toolbar out of our way those are those are what are meant to help when when folks are um, you know distracted by the fact that they're working within blocks, a paragraph is a block in the WordPress editor. It just happens to have a box around it when you do it. So you know, trying to not use that that um, you know using something like dis distraction free as you're typing, you know, you don't get that box. That's part of the the uh, the purpose of things like distraction free. Um, editing. So that's just before I before I forget. So right now we're 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 looking at um, these heading blocks. Uh, right now these are paragraphs. Let me get rid of this paragraph here. Remove the paragraph. So it's as simple as as transforming that paragraph into a heading block and then choosing what your heading will be. So the default H two. So I took this and I made this a heading block. I can make this. Now by selecting, make that an, an H3. You can make it, uh, you can have multiple H1s. It, it is allowed, but it's not recommended. Um, I'm gonna change this so you can see the difference and we can compare them. That's the H4. Typically, I'm never getting past like an H3 and maybe an H4 in a document. Um, I'm not sure, you know, you can have certain types of documents where you really do have to get to a level of style you can see where the h5 in this theme now has a completely different style that is defined right now by the theme it can be changed can be overwritten um but you know uh transforming this to all caps and bold is what the default h5 heading is let's see what h the h6 is i'm going to change this to heading and i'm going to change it to an h6 and now that's uh all caps uh a little bit smaller font not bold so these are all these are all um, heading blocks in their basic thing. So now, even if I look at my, come over to my outline, you can see that the outline mode is looking at, and yes, it is just the core H uh, heading block um, per Eagle's um, comment uh, earlier on that. I didn't know that, uh, although I haven't tried other block packages, but it, uh, I'll take your word for it that that's, that's a universal um, that's a universal thing, but this is again where now we're seeing the issue uh, of the, the how the order would work. Um, an example of what you wouldn't want to do is say I change this to now uh, an H1. Um, this is even an, this is a nice thing that that WordPress is now doing. It's even telling you um, this is not in the right order. That's why these are these are highlighted these colors and all. Um, 
and it's giving you, uh, I'm, I'm really liking the accessibility notes that come in. You know, you, your color choice is not going to have high enough contrast. Your, your headings are in the wrong order. Um, uh, very, very, very handy, these little prompts and, and, you know, knowing where they are and using them, you know, writing up your whole document and then going to the outline mode and, and looking to say, hey, do I have any issues? Very, very, uh, very, very handy. Um, Hey, can I ask, since you said accessibility, sorry if this is a, a dumb question, but um, having no experience with screen readers at all, maybe others on this call can answer this, but I, how does a screen reader handle or or tell the person that there's a heading? Does it does it tell them this is a heading? Sue's got her hand raised. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Educate me. How does that work? I happen to know this one. I sat through way too many of these webinars. <laughs> Um, when you tab, if you use a screen reader, or as you scroll down, the screen reader will look for H2s, and then it anticipates an H3. And if you tab and you've got something else there, like an H5 or something, it, it doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, Peter's doing it now with the skip to content, or some, whoever's presenting. Yeah. The, um the H tags, you know, my daughter's been doing SEO for 20 years, which scared me to death when she told me that the other night. Mm. But she said the old rule was a page should have one H1, two H2, and three oh. H3s. <laughs> and that was the original rule. Yeah. And she's of the mind that you can put a second H1 if you change significant topics partway down the page. Yeah. But, but does the maybe but I guess my question is more around not the tabbing part but the screen reader itself does the screen reader tell the person like yeah. the differences in headings like it does it tell read yes. out like, this is an h2 or h4 it or, says this is an important heading this is a oh there's some other words I can't remember them but okay. there are words and then of course there's the whole SEO thing right okay thanks yeah I, I, everything that um what this does is, and anything and i always say this that you're working on accessibility is great for seo great for usability organizing your document in a logical way helps all of the things humans and machine alike understand that document that much more so um for for those who are like ah, accessibility and and all i just you know it's like but you might be very interested in search engine op search engine optimization and all of this will help with that. And anything you do to help one um, one person use the website will help everybody use the website. Um, some neat things here are that that um, you, you might not know as, as, as simple as, again, if you were like just a keyboard user, you went into the, the distraction free mode and all, you know, you can, you can go uh, to the next line, uh, it defaults to a paragraph, block again this idea that you could hit the slash and then choose from your list but if you hit um uh, pound pound space you turn in it you're you're in an h2 if i was this is a this is a heading and it is an h2 by default so that that's just one of those some folks are very if i did pound 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 three space now this is heading so it, it it's an automatic um a way of of creating things just by typing the other thing you could do is with that slash if you go slash h2 you're an h2 um so these are those kinds of things where when you're getting caught up in inserting a block versus what are the keystrokes that help me do things and there's a lot of that it takes practice but knowing that those are some options um that you have to uh to kind of create some of this stuff on the fly and again a lot of times you're just doing paragraphs and th that first step you're doing is organizing your document headings to kind of say here's a section the paragraphs that you're writing and then then you're going back and maybe adding content formatting things a little bit different um and so on so um and and we can see again what um what lands in this outline um and the order that it that it works so that's that's there um, another thing to show, this is, this is, um, now available in the heading, that same top toolbar you have, you can, you can bold a section within now your heading style defined by your theme, or if you've overwritten it may already have it 
mold, for example, in which case sometimes, you know, it won't really do anything if you're, if you're styling something bold that that's already bold, um, uh, you can make something. Uh, Sorry, you, you actually like segued into my, my leading softball question to you. Okay. That it, so, Cause sometimes, and sometimes there's things that you'll see in this, this view, this kind of writing view, if you will, that when you then go look at the actual page itself, as you said, your theme is applying its own styling on top of it. So if you don't mind like this particular page, if you look at it in preview, this one, I guess this one kept your H2. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like some themes, if they define a specific styling for the headings, right. sometimes not just headings, but for certain things, what you see in that, what you think is a WYSIWYG view is actually not a WYSIWYG. Sometimes it's a function of how well the theme is created. Um, I'll show you this real quick. If you go into options and you go into preferences, one of the toggle switches is uh, use yeah. styles in the editor. If you turn that off, that's going to change this completely. Now it's just sort of basic, basic. So, in, you, you know, it, it may be, in some cases, it may be as simple as that's, that's turned off. When you turn it back on, now that is going to match what the theme is. So you're using the theme style that's on the front end in the editor. Do you know if that's on by, I was curious, by, is that on by default normally? Or is that it all? seems to be for me, but um, I'm not curious. sure if that's 100%. Uh, all right, I've read some, some situations before where I've seen a mismatch. Maybe, maybe that thing had been turned off by mistake. Yeah. Okay. You do have the whole background. Uh, say I wanted to give that a background of that of this green color, the same type of thing. So we're the same that, that you might have seen paragraph. Here's where. So if I preview this, you could see that you know I've got that H2 heading. Um, but here's where you get into kind of more interesting things. Say I'm going to style that, put that in the center. Let me preview that. Of course, we're seeing it also on the back end. So there's. But I think this one does work if I make this. Uh, full width, right. So in this case, this is where now the heading, you can start doing things just by saying, um, instead of putting it in a group, the heading understands or has built into it this whole idea of wide, um, um, make it kind of basic fit, go wide or go full screen. So when you go full screen, now you have this kind of neat effect if you want to break up your page and, and all. So that's built into the heading, just going through your toolbar and saying, okay, uh, the paragraph didn't didn't show this part here. The group one did that in our example before. If I change that to now the wide and not full um, and preview that, it'll look a little bit different. So it doesn't go to the full edge. It goes to a width that's beyond your content, but not to the full, to the full width. Um, so, you know, all of these, these additional uh, functions, now you can see how, oh, you've got uh, a, a, an interesting uh, title um, or, or section break by using the background colors. And again, using the same, those link, uh, the text choices and the background choices, um, your font size, you can, you can manipulate it. You could see that, that uh, the extra, well, it was even a different um, image. What, what, what size was it? It was, you have the small, medium, large. Again, those are meant to be uh, controlled in your style sheet, but you, could, you can go in here and uh, change it to a specific size. So you, you do have that capability also um, built into most of these, you know, typography where you can either, you can choose to go, let me just do my standard. So all my large and all my extra large are all the same size. That's a huge jump between Excel and XXL. Um, so a lot of control over over the design of things. One thing I wanted to show, I was going to ask you, Ray, to do this. Um, if we go to edit as HTML. Yeah, I'm going to let you go. <laughs> yeah, this is where you get to see like what it's doing um, and how it's applying things like, um, you know, different 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 things that might change what you did if i if i if i edit this visual actually so i have that as bold right so if i uh, edit as html um it is an, so strong that mm -hmm. is what was put in by there the em that is what makes something italic 
So on the back, uh, while you're doing this visually, you are just writing HTML. Um, and in fact, you can you can write HTML here. Um, and be careful. <laughs> be careful. Exactly. Yes. You write badly formed HTML. You're going to read your files. You're all screwed up. <laughs> yeah. For most of us, is what we do. Uh, some of the other choices that you have here is like the letter case, um, just as simple as it's 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 transforming it to all uppercase, all lowercase. Uh, sentence case. Um, again, this this uh, allows you to freeform enter something at the beginning, make it a heading, and now say, "Oh, I want all my headings to be uppercase." Um, <clears throat> one of the excuse me, one of the things I don't think we showed. To, to clarify that, though, I, I'm not sure if you meant this, but just from a um, reminder standpoint, like when you change this heading styling here, I'm not saying the obvious, but it's only going to change it on this, this heading, on this page as opposed to. I mean, that's sort of like best practice and we've said this before is if you want if you really wanted to change your h2 styles you really should do it at the theme level right. so it applies consistently across the board but one thing we didn't get to in our toolboxes is also on the three dot drop down hmm. um, and this i think we'll spend more time in another meetup just really taking advantage of, i use like insert before insert after a lot you know instead of that whole i can't put the block where i want it well if you want to block after the block you're in you could say insert after and it'll drop you'll start right there and you can go well what do you want there and maybe you want a paragraph um well i don't have to put the slash you know yeah that, I th you're right i think that stuff we can cover in the next yeah. one so. but um but here's an and here's another thing to cover which is if i let's try it so newly added to wordpress core so i can copy the style and if i come here i'm curious if it changes this the heading level i don't think it will come here and say uh, paste styles. So it's still an H4, but now it looks like that. So I'm pasting the styles that I've done uh, in this block. You can copy and then paste the style. Um, there may be, there's a lot of reasons why if you had, maybe you, you have custom H2s and you said on this page, I did it a certain way. And you can very quickly copy all the work you did on one to the others just by hitting, uh, again, highlighting this, going to your three dots, copy style, coming here and pasting the style. Um, control Z, I'm just gonna undo what I did. So, um, and another thing, I said control Z, but you might not know it, you have a a forward and back, you know, undo, redo, um, or it's telling you control Z, control Y. What else on the headings? I think that's that's good because then let's let's um let's go to the wrap up and then we'll just leave it for the next thirty minutes to see what's um see there's a lot here we this this is this this is Peter and I always joke about this it's like even even something like this which Peter did extra Peter did extra credit he's he's ready for part two some not ready but just three well, three tiny controls I misread our notes and I had a bunch of other. <laughs> There's a lot one to other, cover here. Um, <laughs> one other little editing shortcut is if yeah. if you create a document in Google Docs and you set your styles H1, H2, and such in using the Google styles and then yeah. just copy and paste, uh, the uh, block editor picks up the Google styles. Yeah. I'll yeah. Some. yeah. Which is I, just a, a phenomenal. It, 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 I think it works in Word too, as long as you don't. No, you don't want to use Word because Word will, uh, throws other editing codes in there that it doesn't clean out. Uh, Google doesn't throw those uh, weird codes in there, but Word will. As long as you, <clears throat> I thought it's gotten better now. So I, I we, we, let's yeah. I tried it the other day and it threw in some styling codes. Like, you know, there was some stuff in the. The other caveat with both of those, though, is when you pay, Peter, let's do a live, maybe this is a, a, a wrap up real quick, but just as long as you don't do paste and match style, because in that case, I think it drops all the styling, right? So if I came over here and. Right. Go... Yeah. So put an H1 in, in here. Uh, so you want to make this okay yeah or heading yeah, make this. it's got to be an h tag yeah you're right yeah and let's do a couple of them yeah i did that and then came over here and just did a straight paste yeah so you do a straight yeah. paste the question is does it keep 
Yeah, it was the first one was an H1, and the second one was an H, even though they say H2. That's what I. So if you undo that now, if you undo your paste for a second, and then do the what is the right click paste? Paste as uh, plain text. Well, paste as plain text, or the other one in the browser, which is paste the match format, whatever the. Yeah, so in that case, it's going to lose. It's going to lose. That it. commands in Word. That commands not in, in yeah. WordPress. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I don't remember the, the paste and match format, but definitely a lot of times the paste as plain text is one of the safest way to go when you're just grabbing something from a place and then it it, it does what this just did. Um, if you're although, copying yeah. from a website to a website, yep. absolutely paste as plain text because there's going to be five pounds of code behind it. Right, for sure. Although I don't know if you noticed what this was an example of. It took that and places plain text it used, um, it didn't set uh, each one as a, um, it put a, a break at the end. Of, it's not a, it's one paragraph with can line switch, breaks. Peter, can you switch to a list view instead of outline view for a second, just so we can see that uh, oh. in, the, in your, um, yeah. Yeah, so this is now one paragraph. So that was, um, oh, that, was that was pasting. Or other questions, text. yeah. But in my Google Doc, I did not have carriage returns between these. So right. it said, okay, well, we'll just do this as a block of text with carriage returns, not with uh, a, a paragraph, which um, in this case we're seeing is. The, the... That may be a solution for what Barb was looking for exactly. earlier. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to use Google Docs. Yeah. Since we're, this is funny, but because this does take, because we're talking about text, um, we're talking about the text blocks, but one thing I believe so I've, I've seen at least Peter do this before so within within a WordPress site if you're copying from let's say one page in your site to the next it will preserve the blocks right like if because that's how you you get them from the block pattern repository you're basically copying and pasting so you're copying the WordPress code that's behind so that does get preserved yes Right. So, yeah, that's just one of those, like, you kind of forget about it, but this is the one place where, yes, you actually can copy and retain. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. what I use sample page for. You do something that's pretty cool looking, you paste it onto sample page, and yep. you can use it, like, next week. 100%. Yeah. But, you know, again, now coming here, let's do this, and, and I'll just do this while we're talking if um, there are any questions that come up. But you know, showing what these look like in a in a different theme. Um, I guess I did save this, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see what I do. Okay, update that. Now, if I go um, to my themes, let's just put this somewhere where I can see it, and I change it to Astra. Now, when I refresh that, it's a completely different look. Um, interestingly, it didn't carry over Dr. that styling, and that's not 100% universal. A lot of times it will carry over the styling. Um, Again, it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Does Astra have used theme styles as the option? Do you turn that on? On the... On Astra. On, on the, the page Astra? you were editing? Yeah. Did, was is the default on your site to use the theme styles? Because if it is, you that's... switched it. I think right. Didn't you do that, Peter? When I asked that question, I thought you yeah. switched it in your your visual editor. Although maybe you haven't refreshed this page yet. Yeah, it's on, and now it's showing me the Astra setting. Right. Uh, here's what'll yeah. be interesting. So click I on that block and look it. at the. What's that? Click on that same block and see what the background settings are. You're gone. Mm -hmm. No, the heading block. If you click on the heading block, is that the one you had? The, the green yeah, yeah. one. That's the green one that I had. Okay. That was so, the H2. Yeah. So yeah. now let's change the theme to back to, well, let's change it to Frost and see what he's, let's see what uh, Brian's going to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me refresh that. Oh, yeah. because well, he he's got he's got he's got style variations. Exactly. So, so he's he's got global palettes. So he's right. he's got a blue set as the uh, the background for an H two probably. 
which by the way is a great uh what we could do here let's, just to show blue is his highlight color his highlight color okay mm -hmm. yeah so you've got the highlight if you go to let's go back to 2023 i'm going to activate that and now we should be back to kind of what we were seeing with the green yep. Yep. but now if we go here and we go to the editor and we go to so this is a block theme we've kind of we've been showing this before and i come over here i clicked on that yeah. and i go to styles and then i go to because the 2023 theme has uh style variations so this is that green one that we we've, we've been using but now maybe i want to try this one mm -hmm. right and um uh, by the way, this was another thing that's been added where you're kind of getting, you know, live content being shown in this instead of just a picture of it, which is which is nice. But say I changed it to this one. Oh, well, let's change something dread. Let's change it to purple. And now I, I'm saving that. Save again. Save again. Right. Because it's giving me like, oh, you're going to save a couple of things. Now, if I refresh this same 2023 theme, but there was a style variation, which is basically a different list of color for heading color for uh accent color and all, all now we've got this so this is the same theme but using what's called a style variation we're going kind of way off the tracks but this is it, it is but it's a good thing like again, yes. this is the whole idea of like, like cascading style sheets that there's an order and there's precedence and i think a lot of people get tripped up in that too because you, you're changing something on your page or your post yes. whatever and you're like what is going on? If you're not familiar with CSS or in the inspect tool or something like that, it's unfortunately now it's become a little bit more complex. You have to hunt for different places to say what's overriding what I did. Right. Well, it's it's yeah. also the concept that the that oh my gosh, <laughs> look and feel is is controlled by the theme, which is what yes. should should be happening. Yeah. But this is I I, I just. Again, I keep coming back to this thing that says this is why when we show you something in a demo and then you go back to your website and you're wondering why it looks so different. Yep. I mean, here's one theme with these style variations, which is basically just simply applying a different style sheet, a different set of instructions to say, what does a heading look like? What is a, you know, what is the main color from this palette? If I had, if I had made this a specific color by picking it versus picking one from the circles, um, it would it would stay because now I'm overriding uh, and picking a color um, versus saying use the accent color, use the highlight color. You well, know. here's the other thing: is some of those globe, some of those style colors that you see in that block uh, pattern, yep. are they're variables set yeah. by the global palette. That's yes. And so when you change themes, you actually change that color to whatever that global palette says that color is. There you go. Yeah. Right. So there's there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background. Okay. Can I can I show one more silly example? Yes. Yeah. Can, can you go into you can do it because I'll okay. show. Um, can you go into the Hartford um, Hartford WordPress site? So the Hartford one. Uh, the, our, yeah, the one where we have our slides. And can you just go to a sample page in the site? Get out of our. Just like, wait, this, this is a uh, another uh, plugin I can show real quick. I like I like this. Uh, Hide the admin bar until you scroll up to the top for anybody who wants to get that out of the way. Where am I going? Go go to a go to a page where do we have um either an existing page or a new page and just go to the um do we have a sample page in here or something just to throw in a oh yeah, go to sample page right there and just edit that for a second. It's just it's just a goofy example more of more styling stuff you can do. So um I don't know, on one of those. On one of those paragraphs, someplace maybe I don't know the the X Y Z doohickey or something. Do me a favor on one of those paragraph blocks. Okay. Uh, That's so cool. Long, something kind of long. Maybe that first one. Yep. Go um, under advanced. Put in um, under the advanced tab on the right. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, under advanced. Put in this for the block. Oh, you have a of a class. Let's get rid of that for a second. I don't know what that E plus is supposed to be. Type in. Um, Typewriter, typewriter dash style. Because unbeknownst to you, I've added some CSS in here. So go ahead and update. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and update this and just do a preview. This is just a silly. Hopefully it works. Unless I got screwed up. And now if you view that page, where's where's that text? 
Hopefully I typed the class name correctly. Uh, scroll down. Where, where'd it go? It wasn't right at the top. If you're going to the customizer, then maybe I maybe I gave you the wrong class name. Okay. Um, and, and if this is screwed up, I'll 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 give up on this. But I thought I put it in here <laughs> earlier today under additional CSS, all the way at the bottom. Uh, typewriter dash effect. Sorry, typewriter dash effect. So can you typewriter uh, effect? Yeah. Uh, so let's change that that class name again. So th this is just. People are probably seeing this too, but you know, again, the, there's there's a lot of power to there's a lot of power to these basic um, basic blocks that you know some of it is you can change it within the block editor itself. Some of it is within just a, a line or two of, of CSS can give you something kind of nifty like that or oh, typewriter effect, you know. So there's a ton of these. I mean, we haven't even touched upon that. These are all the crazy CSS things you can do. Um, you know, what's the CSS tricks is, is kind of the granddaddy of them all. So there's there's more to styling than just what you can do in the block editor. But that goes back to kind of wrapping this back up to the beginning. You know, the reason we're going through this series, and hopefully people find it interesting, I, I'm finding it interesting, <laughs> is yeah. there, there's a lot of hidden features, hidden in plain sight in some cases, behind these blocks. And sometimes it was just a couple of lines of CSS you can do the thing that some plugins are basically saying that they they can do for you. If, if it's just that one percent thing you're missing, before you rush off and install another plugin or another block, maybe there's just a line of CSS that you can add, and that's it. And you can still continue to use the core blocks. There's another trick. Uh, one of the reasons I love generate blocks, they have a what they call the headline block. Hmm. And I use a headline block instead of any other text block because you can change the headline block uh, from any of the headlines, H1, H2, H3. You can change it to a paragraph within the, the controls there. You can also change it to a div. So you can use the generate blocks headline to create a div. So yeah. you can put in text, you know, you could. Like this. Uh, yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this it's, is so the, cadence advanced. Yeah, yeah. Right. advanced text and and the heading. Um, those are what's great about this is that whole topic about um, you know using headings for formatting. This solves that problem because you can make something a div yeah. and then style it any way you want, but it doesn't change your outline. Um, it allows you to have control like it was a head, you know, you've got a lot more control over it. It's, it's a, it's a great feature that um, is not in the core block, right? You can only choose headings where yeah. in these other tools like generate uh, blocks has, and like the cadence advanced text has, where now you can not only do you have the heading choices, but you can make it a paragraph, uh, a span or a div, but now you have all of the, design controls from this advanced block and you can see from core versus a third party where you add something you have a whole lot more choices you get into a lot oh yeah lots of more, lots more control you do which and, and again it's back to one of those with great power yes. <laughs> it's, it's knowing that when you need this because there's a lot of times where all you need is a paragraph and, right. and you know sometimes these other ones not that they're heavier in terms of anything from performance or whatever but sometimes it's overkill you know you, you yeah. can just use the standard paragraph block so, but if you use this block, you can go in and turn off all those other blocks that you don't need. Yeah. You, you can turn off the paragraph, you can turn off the heading. So those won't load. So this one block will take the place of two or three blocks. And so you you can then trim your code that, that Gutenberg uses. Yeah. So many ways of doing things. Yep. Writing CSS versus a block like this where now you're putting in text shadows and oh. Can we, um, and I know again, we, we always do this, but oh, we, we have some good interaction in the chat. So hopefully if, if you yeah. um, if you had something that we didn't cover, um, we, we have like 10 minutes, you can shout it out now. Otherwise, can you go back to the, the slides again, Peter, if you don't mind, sorry, I'm making you look uh -huh. around here. Um, and just go back up to, we don't really have a wrap up slide. So let's go back to the, the, the first one again. Um, so just to kind of show what, what's to come, um, if you click on, I'm sorry, click on the, yeah, that, that's fine right there. 
So we've only covered three of these, and I, I promise it's not going to take us, you know, six months to cover all the the blocks. But you know, these are probably at least the paragraph one in my mind is one of the most four important blocks of all because you use it for everything, and most most of your content is is text or for most people. Um, so what we're what we are proposing on doing for part two is covering. Um, the rest of them. So I think like the quote and poll quotes, I mean, those are fairly similar, the classic code, et cetera. Those, those should go a bit quicker. Um, yeah. Then later, what we're hoping later this year is looking at some of, I think the ones that can take a lot of time are the grouping blocks. You know, so we already looked at groups, yeah. but those like columns, et cetera, that's, those are very powerful. I think there's a lot of, a lot of things you can do with those that people may not be aware of. So we're going to spend a lot of time on those probably in the future. So excellent. Hopefully, hopefully this is valuable to people. Again, the big thing too with this is um, play around. I mean, like like I said, as we first started, I I'm surprised at how far both Gutenberg, WordPress, and the blocks have come, you know, since since the early, early days of, of Gutenberg. So you know, the way you get familiar with things, those shortcuts too, that's another one like Peter was saying too, they're, they're real time savers. If you're writing, you know, a blog or something like that, it just, you know, takes a second or two to just learn that. It'll it'll save you time. It really will. So, you know, practice, learn, learn that. Eagle, thanks again for joining. Thanks everyone, I guess, who, um, who contributed to the chat and contributed to, uh, Helping us present, and like we said, we're we're the we're the presenters, but we're always looking for for additional feedback from from people. So we thank you very much for that. Well, thank you guys. This this was excellent. I a lot of good information. I can't wait for the next parts. But don't feel bad about going through something too fast or too slow because you can't go slow enough for me. <laughs> That's why we record them too. You can always go back and watch it after. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. That's the best part. All right. Well, I think let's wrap it up there then. Thank you everyone again so much. And we hope you join us again for, for part two. And I'll send out all the information, um, the links to the, the site. We'll send out the uh, the recording probably sometime tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. And again, if you have any comments, questions, let us know directly either through Meetup or join our Facebook group and uh, we can keep the conversation going there as well. So. Thanks, everyone. Thanks again, Peter. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.